you're having a great day today. Before the start of the weekend, I want to talk about something that we keep talking about all the time, and that is stress and how chronic negative stress and emotions is now linked with almost every single disease. As we understand today, some genetic diseases happen, whether you like it or not, because there's a strong gene. Is there something you can do about it? Of course, a lot because of epigenetics. But what about all the other lifestyle diseases? Today, we know that medical science is showing us the connection between poor emotional health and disease. In every way, you have spiritual science also showing us the same thing. Now today, spiritual science and allopathy and integrative medicine are all talking to each other. And people are starting to see that an allopathic drug alone may not be a solution. It requires you to make lifestyle changes. But again, we can go on and on talking about stress. It's always puzzled me. It's always puzzled me. We're human beings. We go through stress every single day. But considering the way that the world is moving right now, okay, while we have great nutrition, we have great medicine, we have access to so many things, why is stress becoming such a big problem in people's lives? Shouldn't things be better? We have access to more comfort. We have access to so much more. We have access to technology, content, social media. We can keep in touch with our loved ones. In fact, too much. We're constantly connected with people. Well, why is there so much of stress? You go on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you have a solution for everything. You might have a solution or someone's opinion, but why is there stress? And I've been thinking about this because every patient I consult every single day has some amount of stress. And I know it right then while I'm writing out their prescriptions, putting them onto a program or whatever it is, that if they do not manage the stress, they cannot get better. They can feel better, but the root cause of the problem is never gonna be addressed. So let's talk about stress today. And I want everyone to just listen and reflect. Most people, don't, don't, don't react when I say this, but most people don't have stress. Most people do not have problems in life. Most people have resistance. They have resistance to people, problems, events, situations that are happening in their life. And that resistance is their stress. That resistance is their stress. Let me break this down for you, okay? The more resistance you have, what is resistance? It's your ego not agreeing with reality. Like, it's gonna to rain today, it may spoil my plans. It's reality, it's going to rain. But now the ego comes in. Oh, this stupid rain spoiling my plans, it's the weekend, why did it have to rain today? What's wrong with the stupid weather? That's your ego caused by resistance. But the fact is, reality is reality. You got sick. Okay, reality is you got sick. Now, what you can do to get better, the actions you can take, but the ego comes in. Oh, how could I get sick? I work out, I eat well, I do this. The ego comes in, resistance comes in. And resistance uses a lot of your energy. So your ego comes in. How could he say that to me? How could she say that to me? Why is there so much of traffic? What a stupid, horrible city I live in. All of this is your ego, but the reality is there is traffic in your city. The reality is people will say what they wanna say, behave how they want to behave, irrespective of who you are, what you want. That is the reality. But your ego now brings in resistance and that resistance becomes your stress. Whoever said that things have to go the way you want them to be? Whoever said everything has to be on time? Whoever said all these things? It's what you built in your head, what your ego's built, because your ego wants it to be a particular way. Your ego wants it to be different from reality because it doesn't suit you. When it suits you, it's great. Oh, it's raining today, I'm sitting at home, it's beautiful, there's thunder, there's lightning, I don't have to go out, what beautiful weather, I love nature. That same rain on another day because it doesn't suit you, becomes your resistance. So you see, reality is reality. Your ego is everything that wants to resist reality, and that's where all your stress and your problems are. Whoever said that if you get into a relationship, it has to be perfect? Whoever said someone has to love you for a lifetime? It's what you wish for. It's what you intend for, and we all intend for that. It's beautiful. We don't want to lose love. We don't want to lose things that we have. We don't want to lose money. It's normal, but whoever said it's got to be permanent? No one. Your ego wants it to be that way, but reality is different. 
So when we understand that today all the stress you have in your life is resistance, now you have something to work with. You have something to work with. And that resistance is your obstacle to healing. It's your obstacle to getting better. It's your obstacle to recovery. It's your obstacle to your relationships patching up and getting better. It's that obstacle towards your personal growth. Why? There is so much energy that goes into resistance. Everything, everything is energy. What is gonna heal your cancer, heal your diabetes, heal your Alzheimer's, heal whatever problem you have is energy. If I don't have energy, my immune system can't work for me. Everything is energy. If you don't have energy, you know how you feel. You feel sluggish, you feel lethargic. If you don't have energy to build a relationship, if you don't have energy to build intimacy into your relationships, if you don't have energy to invest in yourself, personal self-growth, knowledge, exercise, you can't do anything. Everything is energy. And if that energy is being depleted by your resistance, no drug in this world can heal you. So there has to be acceptance. The opposite of resistance is acceptance. When you're in a state of constant resistance, you're in a state of disharmony. You're not accepting life. You're not accepting reality, okay? It's your ego. How could this happen to me? Well, it's happened to you because you're human. You're a grain, you're a speck of dust in this amazing, massive universe. That's who you are. Remind yourself every day, all of us, irrespective of success, fame, how much money we may, have, we may have, designation, power, whatever, flattery that you get from people, you are a speck of dust. I am a speck of dust, controlled by universal energies, power, the cosmic prayer, intention, and everything else. That's who you are. You put that suit on in the morning, you get in your rose or whatever, great. You earn it, feel good about it, but you are a speck of dust and you align with nature. You align with the universe. You don't get away from that. You don't get to escape that. So coming back to resistance and coming back to acceptance. Let me give you a simple example. Today, a lot of people are suffering. There are billionaires suffering. There are people in Bollywood, in Tollywood, on television. El elite athletes suffering. You would say, they're ungrateful people. They have so much money. They have so much of everything. How can they be suffering? Well, we make our own suffering, you and me. Doesn't matter how much you have, but right now, if you have suffering in your life, you are contributing to it. And let me tell you how. Let me tell you how. Your suffering are and is the stories that you tell yourself about the problem, about the person, about the thing, perception. That is your suffering. While well, your suffering may be real, I got a disease, I'm going through pain. Yes, that's real suffering. While well, there's action, medication that you can take, but if you start telling your stories, yourself stories about that suffering, oh, this pain, it's my karma, it's come to me, I deserve it, I need to be punished. That's bull crap. Most people don't understand the true meaning of karma. They think karma is punishment. They blame their cancers on karma. They blame all their suffering on karma. By doing that, you don't take responsibility. You don't accept and you don't take the right actions because you've given into, oh, it's karma. I should play this role of a victim. It ain't that. When you're in a state of constant resistance, you're the victim. You're in victim mode. When you're in victim mode, there's anger, there's frustration. Again, energy, precious energy that is being depleted from you that can go towards healing you, recovery, training your immune system, reducing inflammation, cognitive brain power, memory, strength at a physical level, musculoskeletal level. All of that is energy, but you're depleting it on things because of your ego and resistance. So your suffering, your suffering are the stories you tell yourself about a person, a thing, or an event, or anything that you hear. So for example, you get a bad diagnosis. Like I have patients every day who are getting diagnosed with cancer. And I have to tell them that yes, while we can wish it didn't happen and all of that, you can go through the pain, you can go through the anger. But what you've got, the diagnosis, is only information. Now your perception of that information will create fear, will create anger, will create you in a victim mode, whatever it is, go through that stage. Go through that stage of denial, go through the stage of anger, but finally you have to arrive at acceptance because if you're stuck in resistance, you are depleting all that energy. Even your drugs and your chemotherapies cannot work efficiently when the body is depleted of energy. So now you must reach acceptance. You're going through a breakup. I'm not here to teach you some airy-fairy stuff. You're going through a breakup, act all positive, talk positive. No, I want you to feel the pain. I want you to go to grief. I want you to go through the feeling of betrayal, hurt, whatever it is, of loss, of grief. That's why human beings grieve, to grieve. 
to get it out of our system. Go through that. But knowing that you have to reach a point of acceptance. You can't go through resistance. Everyone out there carrying emotional baggage is doing nothing but resistance. Your emotional baggage is your past. You can wish it could have been different. You can intend it could have been different. But it is your past. It's happened. There's nothing you can do to change it or anyone else. You've got to cut it. Easy to say, difficult to do, but difficult isn't impossible. It is your resistance and your ego that is not allowing you to cut away your emotional baggage. I have the most spiritual people who cannot cut away emotional baggage because they are with ego. It's happened. Reality is reality. Someone broke up with you. Someone cheated on you. You got sick. This didn't work out. You didn't get a promotion. Your business isn't doing well. Reality is reality. There are actions that you can take, but don't let your ego come and try to tell you how it should be and what it should be, because then you're in a state of constant resistance. And it is that resistance that is people suffering. It is that resistance is what people's stress is made up of, trying to be in control, always in disharmony because you're fighting and you're resisting. There are certain intelligences in the human body and around us in nature. They're natural laws and natural intelligence. Like you can say, I'll throw, up, I'll throw an apple in the air and it'll fall down. But I don't believe that. I'm going to keep throwing it up and down because I'm going to prove that the law of gravity doesn't work. And you're going to just deplete your energy trying to do it. It's a law. It's a law of intelligence, a law of nature. So you see, the more you try to resist things that you cannot control, you're only depleting energy more and more and more. Maybe there's a certain amount of weight that you can lift in the gym. 100 kilos, 200, 250. After a while, you can't. You can't lift any more weight. That's resistance. But the more you try, the more you try then the spine has a problem. You have a herniated disc, you have a bulging lower lumbar uh, a spinal problem because you are trying to push against resistance. It's a law, it's heavier than you, much heavier, and you don't have the strength to push that weight up. That's the reality of it. Accept reality, reality is reality. Your ego doesn't want reality to be reality. It wants it to be, or the person to be, or the event to be the way your ego and pride wants it to be. So when you understand this today, what is your exercise for the weekend? All the stress and suffering that you have in your life, write down, what am I resisting? Who am I resisting? What actions can I take to stop this resistance? And the moment you stop resisting, I can guarantee you your life is going to change. Your ego and pride is gonna bruise for a while. That's okay. That's always been your obstacle to now, to, to, uh, to, to this moment if you've been constantly stressed. But the moment you decide to flow, it doesn't mean you're a doormat, it doesn't mean you're a loser. No, it means you've decided to stop resisting things that you cannot control, period. That's it. So what are the things and people I can stop resisting and allow it to flow? You win and lose in life. Everyone wins and loses. Everyone thinks they're winning when everything's going well and then disease hits you and death hits you. Okay, for some people, you may not see that as loss, but a lot of people do see that. We win and lose. Your kids are going to win and lose. They are not always going to be winners. Okay, so get off that pedestal of yours that you're trying to push your kid out of their zones and stuff like that. They cannot be winners. Train them to be losers as well. Train them to face adversity. Train yourself to face loss, negativity, rejection, betrayal. All of these things. Again, it's perception. Rejection for some people is, oh, my self-worth's crashed. I'm useless, I'm unworthy. Rejection for some people is guidance to something and someone more beautiful or someone who's right for you. So it is all perception. Your suffering is the way you perceive a problem, a person, a thing. The stories you tell yourself about a person, a thing, or an event, and that becomes your reality after a while because you believe in it all the time. So that's how you look at stress and that's your simple weekend exercise. I can guarantee you right now, there are very few things I can guarantee, but one of them that I can is most of the stress in your life right now is your resistance. And that is your starting point to making the change. Even right now, unfortunately, if you have been diagnosed with a deadly disease, that is information, there's a diagnosis. But you control the prognosis by thinking, perception, right actions, right team, prayer, faith, belief, so many different medicines that you can use beyond medicine. What's stopping you? Your ego, your resistance. 
Have a great day, everyone. Have a great weekend. I hope you have great weekend plans coming up. Have a great day. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you. This weekend, I'm leaving for New York. I'm going to be in New York on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Most probably, I will be doing a walk, a catch-up walk at Central Park, depending on the weather. So everyone in New York, around Brooklyn, I'm going to be in Brooklyn as well, Tribeca, all of these places. Hope to bump into you or see you at Central Park for an early morning walk. Take care and have a great weekend, everyone.